Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending this session. I am Prasad Khake from Paper.Inc. I am the co-founder and I will be telling you about our journey so far and hopefully you will find it interesting. So, I and my co-founder, we are both electronics engineer from MIT Pune and we built this product working part-time uh, working part-time on this product while having our full-time jobs. So, this might be relatable to the students here and maybe you can build your own thing as well after this. So, yeah, let's get started. Paper. So, Paper Inc. is a low-power open source e-paper development board. If you have used Amazon Kindle, the e-book reader here, the screen they use is called e-paper display. It's not a LCD or LED or something like that. The hardware is called e-paper display. And if you ever used an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, you know you can build projects on top of it. Uh, the problem we faced was there was no Arduino or Raspberry Pi for e-paper display boards. You, if you had to build your own projects on e-paper display, you'd have to buy a Kindle and jailbreak it and build some outside circuitry to uh, make it compatible with your machine and then write code in the, the supported language and try to run some projects on it. So we had this problem and we thought why not just make our own development board and we uh, started working on it. So this is the end product. Uh, we went live with this last, uh, in the month of May, and we sold out the first batch, but more upon this later. Uh, this is a block diagram. Uh, this might be too technical for you, but this is essentially the PCB, printed circuit board, which forms the base of any product. There's a microcontroller you can see on the top right. It's a ESP32 room microcontroller. It's pretty versatile, and it has Wi-Fi Bluetooth, so, you get the ability to uh, connect wirelessly and it's very powerful. And then we have expanders, we have a battery connection to power it, we have uh, buttons which are totally configurable. You can connect it using USB and there's a micro SD card slot as well. So this whole PCB forms the development board on top of which you can build your product, uh, you can build your projects and it, is, it has expandable uh, GPIOs. So you can connect your sensors and they can basically do anything you want. So this basically forms the Arduino for e-paper display boards. You can just buy this and start coding right away. And since it's open source, everything is available on our GitHub. You can even make your own PCBs, fabricate them, and uh, get started. Uh, this is the actual picture. You can see the battery, you can see the PCB, and that's all, everything there. And these uh, units are there outside on the stall. You can visit us and we'll show you. So this is the team. This is Rohit, my partner. He was my colleague and uh, my classmate as well. And we used to stay together. So Rohit is the technical brains behind this. He is a avid open source uh, contributor and he likes electronics and you know hacking around with everything. So one day he just uh, told me the idea and we thought, let's see. We built it for ourselves and then we thought, why not uh, share it with the community and see how big this can become. So this was the initial prototype. You can see it was quite shabby, the outside cover, the enclosure is 3D printed, and it's not that polished yet, but it worked well for the, just to show our vision and what kind of thing we were, uh, we were building. So if you have any idea, uh, how do you test it? How do you uh, show it to the community and see how vital it is? So what we did was we made a small website and that included the key features of the product. We had a small homemade video and the most important thing is we had a user survey form at the bottom. So that user survey form had a couple of relevant questions and at the end it had a question that would you like to be on the wait list for this product. And then basically we started spreading it everywhere online, the relevant communities on Reddit, Hacker News and all the blogging sites. And we started getting feedback. So initially the feedback was good. Uh, people were really excited about our product. And like uh, we got around 500 to 600 people in the wait list. That is when we thought this might become big. Uh, big as in there is a sizable demand for this and we should pursue this further. So again, if you have, you can follow the same steps and just see how good your product is and what is the interest there. After that, uh, you get the feedback and see what things about your product people are most excited about. In our case, it was uh, the open source nature of our product, e-paper display, 
and uh, the long lasting battery. These three things consistently came up during the feedback and we thought this might be something which will be worth useful. So until now, you have an idea and you have a good audience to market it to and there seems to be an interest. So what do you do after that? You, the, like this is the main thing. This is the most brutal work in between launching your product and seeing how it performs. So we'll talk more on this and I'll show you what we had done. So from prototype to MVP, MVP is the short form for minimum viable product. You make the most, uh, so you have an idea of ideal product in your mind, but that ideal product never gets made because there are always improvements which you think of. So you make the closest version to it and then try to ship it. And then in term, for hardware, there are additional steps like you have to decide how to manufacture the product, what techniques to use, how many to manufacture, because to bring the unit cost down, you need to manufacture at a large scale. And uh, if you don't have a unit, uh, like small unit cost, you won't get customers. So that's the chicken and egg problem. Then you have to see whether the components are available or not. And uh, you have to see the sourcing agents and Basically, you have to figure out all the logistics as well as you have to see the, so are you complying with the standard certifications and uh, again, payments and all because most of the components we uh, used were sourced from China and during COVID, everything was shut down. So it was a huge issue. Uh, we had to like buy components at five times the initial price. So these are some of the problems and points which you have to keep in mind while you launch and build your hardware products. And uh, yeah, so again, everything starts with money because without that you can't get started. We had invested our money into the prototype. And if we want to build uh, the first batch, we wanted uh, the upfront capital for it. So you can invest your own capital. You can, uh, you can go to investors to invest in your company. You can take pre-orders from customers. You can do a crowdfunding campaign or you can apply for grants. We didn't have money of our own, neither did we have investors. So the first, and even pre-order. So we are not, we were just two uh, strangers from India who were trying to market our pr prototype. So it was not a very trustful situation and people won't be giving us pre-orders, obviously. So we went for the next option, that is crowdfunding. So the idea of crowdfunding is, you basically show your product to backers, ask them to back you, you take their money, and after taking the money, you manufacture your product and then ship them to the, uh, ship it to them. So it's same as pre-orders, just that in crowdfunding, you can have a set goal. If you have, like we had a set goal of getting 300 units orders, and, and if we achieved that, then only we'd get the full money. If we had not achieved that, then the money would be refunded to all the backers. So we got started with crowdfunding. Now, these are three big crowdfunding platforms which have a sizable audience and which, uh, which have good interest in your product. The only problem is none of these sites support India. So if you are an Indian citizen and if you have an Indian bank account, you cannot go on Kickstarter, you cannot go on Crowd Supply, you cannot go on Indiegogo. And uh, the crowdfunding platforms which are available in India, like Keto or Milab, they are mostly geared towards social causes. So this was again an issue. Uh, we managed to launch on Indiegogo using one of my friend's accounts who was in Europe and we got started. So the launch day happened, this was our Indiegogo page. You can still see it if you search for paper deck Indiegogo. And for launching a crowd camp, uh, crowdfunding campaign, you have to like make the page ready, uh, bring all, all the marketing materials, you have to uh, do the FAQ section and basically show the backers that your product is legit, it works and it has a full good potential for them to invest your money in, invest their money in. So you can see the progress bar. We had a target of around 300 backers and the crowdfunding campaign lasted for 45 days. But in those 45 days, we got only like half of the orders. We got 128 backers and we could achieve 37% of our goal. So again, crowdfunding didn't work out. But during the course of promo uh, like promoting the crowdfund our crowdfunding campaign, uh, I used to cold email a lot of people, apart from the usual marketing stuff, like we would market it on Reddit, we would uh, spread the word on social media, we would uh, email our backers, 
and then i would uh, cold email lots of big people with the hope that they would uh, like if i email 500 people at least 10 of them would open the email and at least one of them would share it with their uh, with their followers and someone would buy them so during the same course of cold emailing people i got a very good response from like lot of people and one of them was kailash nath the city of zeroda and he really liked the product and he offered to give us a grant through fossunited.org so this is the fossunited page and you all must know about it but we basically applied for the funding and we got the grant and that is how we had the money to produce the first batch again uh, making a prototype and making a consumer grade product at least uh, consumer grade product which we want to sell there are many things which you have to consider you have to uh, design for manufacturing so you will have to design some uh, like things which will be taken uh, considered during manufacturing you have to select the appropriate components you have to find everyone in the supply chain you have to see which sources are good which components are good which components are available in your budget you have to find some contract manufacturers who will do your work reliably uh, shipping agents forwarding agents so all these things you have to take care of and it's a lot of grunt work so uh, again making one prototype and making the first batch the, these are the things which you'll have to take care of and you'll have to talk with a lot of people you have to negotiate with everyone you have to get a gut feeling of uh, who is trustworthy who is not uh, we had everything done in china because the main component of our product the e-paper display is only made in china and it didn't make sense for us to import it in india pay the import duties and then to assemble everything here so everything from this was done online on emails lots of calls lots of messages lots of to and fro confirming the, their expectations our expectations the budget and everything basically and that's how we found out the people and we finally placed the order after placing the orders we wanted the samples first and then we had a couple of issues with the samples as well so and this takes a lot of time like if you place the order today the manufacturer will take at least two weeks to make the product and two weeks to ship it to india and once you get it you test it and if you have any improvements you send it back to the manufacturer and the whole cycle like four weeks will uh, four weeks of feedback time will be consumed so unlike software the you have a large uh, turnaround time here and you need to make sure that at least uh, you get it right in the first couple of iterations so yeah we started with the production the samples were finally up to the mark we made some testing jigs and we hoped that everything would go well and uh, the last part so you can uh, sell your product online on your own website or you can partner up with some uh, you know e-commerce stores or you can uh, launch a physical uh, shop but what we saw was most of our customers were from outside india 50 percent of our orders are from the us uh, rest of the 40 percent are from uk germany spain and like 10 or 5 percent of our orders are from india so we had to launch our product online so we made the whole website we made sure there was a order flow there was a something which would uh, accept payments in usd and uh, so the you have to make the documentation pages as well because this will be in the hands of customers and uh, the once they get it how do they navigate through the product so user the first time user experience is extremely crucial and since we are making this for open source enthusiasts and hackers we had to make sure the documentation page was really good so all these things again you'll have to take care of uh, the legal issues uh, taxation shipping policy because uh, and the you will have to find out a payment partner which would convert your usd to inr and again these are some mandatory things which you cannot skip so it's better to know all this so we didn't have any money to do paid marketing uh, so that's why we had to do everything organic again the same grunt work here to we had built up a good email list for, since the last two years the the first prototype was launched on in 2022 february and the final version was done in may of 2022 so since the last two years we 
uh, had a good email list. Uh, the only people who were really interested and excited about our product were there in the list. We always spread it to the relevant communities and were always helpful, uh, like uh, answering the question on time and getting genuine feedback. And we did approach press as well. So um, uh, some of them picked up our story, many of them did not. But like these are the types of things which you have to do uh, the, unless you have a huge marketing budget. So again, it's uh, really, there's no method to it. Uh, you just have to keep shooting your shots and something will convert as long as your product is good and rings to their uh, their mind. So yeah, we launched this last in the month of May. We sold out in the first 10 days. Uh, there are uh, our customers from uh, uh, like vary from over 19 countries worldwide, uh, shipping directly from China. We have like 200 stars on our GitHub, and after that, after the product was sold out, we have more 600 people in the wait list. So that is something which seems potentially good. Now, I want to share the concept of these three generations. So Tony Fadell, the creator of iPod, the co-creator of iPhone, he says that it takes three generations to perfect a product or business. So the first generation will be not profitable. You'll just get out your product, uh, get out your idea, and see what is the demand, what is the feedback, and what kind of things you can improve. After that, you make a decision based on the feedback, based on your own assumptions, and try to make unique econo unit economics work. Because if that is not made, then it's of no use. You cannot make a product for 1,000 bucks if it is costing you 5,000 to make. So I think we are in the second generation right now where we were able to make unit economics work. Uh, we, are not uh, we did not make a loss, but uh, the profit was negligible. And the third generation is basically making a business out of it. This is something we have to yet figure out. But these are the three tenets and three uh, core generations which you might uh, come across when uh, seeing a product journey. And this is again another concept by Jeffrey Moore. Uh, he has written the book Crossing the Chasm. And you can, be, if you can see in the graph on the left hand side, whenever a new shiny product is launched, there are early adopters and innovators who take a bet on that product. They are the ones who want to try out new things and they are okay with uh, uh, trying buggy products. They are very enthusiastic to give the feedback to you and basically just uh, you know uh, spend money on you if your product is good. Again, I think we are here right now. And you might, the key thing you have to assume here, uh, you have to see here is you should find your niche. You cannot uh, please everyone, so you should see who are excited by your product and you should try to uh, get to that. And once that niche is like, you cannot be average in all the department. You have to be very good in one department and that will be enough for you to get started. So this is again a good uh, product journey graph which you can refer to. And yeah, the, so the journey ahead, we would be launching the next batch by this Christmas with some upgrades. And then we have some next products in line. We are thinking of making an e-paper based watch, again open source, and that might be a, uh, uh, open us to new consumers and more uh, expand market. But uh, let's see. So these things never really go according to the timeline, but it's good to have a plan. Uh, it's a nice photo for you to see. And uh, yeah, that's it. You can visit our site or you can get uh, right to me. Any questions?